They're coming after the Second Amendment community. It's happening. And we all knew that that was going to be a red line that would have to be crossed at some point in time. And that line is starting to be crossed in a much more aggressive way than we anticipated now at this moment. And understand that the Second Amendment is very important to preparedness as well as the First Amendment, right? Without the Second Amendment, we can't protect ourselves to the degree necessary for whatever might happen in the future. And without the First Amendment, we can't share ideas or communications about information that might be relevant to our survival. So understand why those two amendments are so important to us here in the preparedness community. And I don't expect you to always pay attention to everything happening to the 2A community, but I'll do that for you because it is still important to us here in the prepper genre, okay? So now understand, why am I bringing this up? Because it, it is relevant, I promise. We know that things are getting desperate, societal decay is spreading, and our political systems are failing, and they're concerned about the upcoming backlash. We all talk about the oncoming storm that everyone's expecting at some point in time here in the future. Well, those who are in power are very aware of it as well, and they're doing their best to try to mitigate any risk that they might have in the future, especially from those of us who are well-armed and well-trained and willing to protect ourselves and maintain our freedom, right? So, what just happened is that a gentleman by the name of Matt Hoover was just convicted in federal court of multiple charges of being in possession of and I guess possibly being involved with the transfer of machine gun conversion kits or machine guns in general, right? And Matt Hoover was the gentleman who ran the YouTube channel CRS Firearms. Now, you might not have watched his channel if you aren't involved in the 2A very much and maybe you're just here for preparedness, which I totally get. But it does matter and it should be something you're aware of. And I wanted to bring attention to this exact situation because it shows us just what kind of a track we're currently on. The whole story goes that Matt Hoover and a gentleman named Justin Irvin, who was also convicted in court of these federal charges, basically got together and collaborate, collaborated, and Justin Irvin ran a company called Auto Keycard. And Auto Keycard basically put out little pieces of sheet metal, basically, that had a stencil drawn on them. And if you were to take that metal, take the stencil, use tools, cut everything out, fold it into a certain shape, do all this other stuff, you could potentially then take that device, stick it into a rifle, and make it full auto, right? I mean, that's just what it is. I don't know what else to tell you, right? Well, Matt Hoover at CRS Firearms was involved with this gentleman, and they were working together, and of course, they were promoting this product because in general, it's just a piece of metal with a drawing on it. Yeah, does it have possible intentions in the future? Sure, you could argue that if you want, but here's the thing. Pre-crime is not supposed to be an issue here in the United States of America, okay? So, they were involved in distributing some of these items, and obviously everything was thought to be very legal because it was just a piece of metal with a drawing on it. And now these two men are facing lots of time in federal prison. Matt Hoover, who has a family, has children, and a wife he's leaving behind, is facing up to 45 years in prison. This guy didn't do anything overtly illegal or violent. This guy maybe, you could argue, made a mistake, but he is being made an example of to the 2A community right now to tell you not to step out of line. And this affects the First Amendment as well, because the First Amendment doesn't just protect what you say verbally. It protects what you do in the sense of art. It protects what you do in the sense of putting out written articles, paintings, drawings, anything else related to expressing yourself with the First Amendment. And those auto key cards could have easily been argued to be First Amendment related because I should be able to access the blueprints for whatever I want. It doesn't mean I'm going to commit a crime. It doesn't mean I have committed a crime. It just means that I should be able to take a look at it or put it out there. And unless a crime is committed in the process, then it shouldn't matter. But now we're facing a precedent where someone put out basically a stencil on a piece of metal and got charged with that piece of metal being considered a machine gun, even though it's the size of a business card and can't be readily dropped into any other device in order to make it a machine gun. This is a very scary precedent. This is not where we want to be in this country. And it just shows how desperate they're getting at the top to try to limit our capabilities and limit what we're willing to do. This is a political psyop in many ways. They want to try to squash any type of dissent. I mean, it's just all there is to it because I can't logically think of any other reason for why this would make it through the court system and actually end up with charges for both of these gentlemen. Look, I could argue all day long whether or not they made mistakes or should have been doing this or that, but that's not the point here. The point here is that what they did is basically pre-crime, and now we're apparently convicting people in federal court of pre-crime, and that is something that should definitely concern you. And because this happened, because this actually made it all the way through the court system and not 
no one was really assuming they were going to get charged because it seemed so illogical to charge somebody with what they're being charged with based on the fact that this item wasn't anything other than a drawing on a piece of metal but here we are so here's the thing not only are they concerned about the idea of people like us being able to be well equipped and trained and everything else but now they're also concerned with the fact that you know um, they want to keep everything under control and regulated to the point where you don't have any wiggle room either. They're trying to close any loophole there is. And of course we have all the situations going on with the pistol brace rule and that got postponed and that's moving out further and further now. And we also know that that deadline's coming up and I don't think there's gonna be a resolution before it at this point in time to be completely honest with you. I mean, we have this going through the court system and these gentlemen being uh, convicted of federal charges, what faith do I have in our court system to actually stop this pistol brace rule thing for being an issue as well? Not to mention the fact that because they keep dragging their feet on it, we're getting closer to the deadline. And even if they were to figure out some sort of injunction, it's possible that the rule would go into effect before that would happen. Not to mention companies like Silencer Shop who offer a form one service to go through that process and make sure that you get all your issues figured out before that cutoff date well they're going to stop their service within the next three or four days because they know the deadline's coming and they're not going to accept any more form one service for that particular uh situation so look there's a lot of stuff happening right now that can kind of prove to you that we're in a failed state in many ways we're in a decaying society where they are trying to deal with people like us in the best way possible with extreme authoritative power from the federal government and then letting rampant crime crawl all over the place without any type of repercussion. So this is going to affect people like you. It's going to affect people like me. It's not just Second Amendment. It's also First Amendment. And it's just, of course, going to affect companies and businesses alike. Now, I have to mention the biggest supporter of the channel is Midway USA. And Midway USA, a very pro 2A company, of course, companies like theirs will likely be targeted in the future as well for providing people like us with all of this equipment when it comes to firearms, when it comes to night vision, when it comes to survival gear, when it comes to even long-term storage food, whatever it is, because they provide that type of stuff to our community, they're gonna be seen as being a possible issue in the future. So what do we do about it? Well, honestly, that's, that's a whole different conversation and that's not necessarily uh, something that's easily answered at this point in time because the court system isn't protecting us from things that it should be protecting us from. So it's very hard to be enthusiastic or optimistic about the way things are going. But what I can say is that I'll put a link down below to a donation account for Matt Hoover's family. Because if anything, he's a fellow gun tuber here on YouTube, somebody who's just tries to put out information and have a good time and got caught up in something that they probably didn't deserve to ever get caught up in. And now they're you know, wife and kids aren't sure how they're going to get by and what they're going to do. So if that's something you want to do to try to support their family during this difficult time, I mean, I'll put that link down there. And I'm just trying to raise awareness about this situation because it's not just two-way related. It's not just, oh, these are loopholes and blah, blah, blah. No, this is excessive force being applied to the law in order to show you what happens when you step out of line. And that should concern you because it kind of tells you where we're at in our society right now and where we're at in the sense of our systems failing us, okay? Now, another thing that I want to mention is that with this whole situation going on and with everything going through the court systems and with everything happening here, we just need to do our best to take care of ourselves, right? So do what's best for you and your family when it comes to this kind of stuff. Make decisions that are going to better you in the sense of making sure you don't find yourself in federal prison, but also you don't limit yourself based on things that aren't necessarily constitutional, right? We're in a very difficult spot at this point in time, and it's only going to get worse until eventually it gets better. But who knows how that's going to go and how that's going to feel when that time comes, because before things get better, they usually get a lot worse. And that's not exactly what I want to experience or deal with at this point in time. I mean, it's not something any of us should hope for, but this is just where we're at. And you should be aware that, you know, you're likely going to be uh, considered a problem at some point in time in the future. I mean, this is just unfair abuse of the justice system. I don't know what else to say. And uh, yeah, it is frustrating to me because there's a lot of crime and there's a lot of terrible things going on in the world right now. And none of that gets any of the attention of scrutiny or the aggression from the federal government and law enforcement agencies like people in the two-way community do. It's just 
It's just the truth. I don't know what else to say. And if anyone wants to go ahead and, you know, complain about this whole thing, like, well, you were just trying to use a loophole and you know what these, you know, things were for and you know what you were doing and da-da-da-da-da. Guess what? Welcome to the way it works when it comes to the law. Loopholes are just part of the deal. They're part of the game that you play, right? Oh, you want to complain about trying to find loopholes around some of these firearms regulations, but you don't seem to really care about the fact that the elite class has loopholes when it comes to the tax system all day long and doesn't have to pay just about anything because if you can afford a CPA and a lawyer and everybody else that can get you everywhere and everything you need to be in order to avoid paying anything at all, well, you can do that. But you know what? I can't afford to do that and most of you probably can't either. So we don't complain about those types of loopholes and we don't think about them very often, but you'll get a lot of people in the comments that'll say, well, you know what you're doing or they knew what they were doing and this is your fault for this and that and whatnot and everything else, right? Loopholes are just part of the game. They're not loopholes. It's just using the system to your advantage. And it's something that we probably need to do more often based on the fact that things are starting to fall apart. So look, I wanted to bring everyone's attention to this because it is important. It is a big deal. Matt Hoover and Justin Irvin shouldn't go to federal prison, but they are uh, they're under the custody of U.S. Marshals as of right now. So that should tell you something. And uh, look into it yourself if you want to get more information. I'm not a lawyer. I didn't digest every single bit of the information regarding this case in order to regurgitate it here. I just wanted to warn you about the precedent that's being set because of what's happening to these two men. And I wanted to let you know that the First Amendment and the Second Amendment don't protect you in the way that we all feel that they should at this point in time. So this regime that's in power right now is very against the idea of self-reliance and self-sufficiency. And guess what? That's all we do here in the preparedness community. So be ready for whatever that means. And besides that, that's going to be it for Magic Prepper.